Hi, this is Mihaela van der Schaar, and I'm delighted to be telling you about our recent progress on the fight against COVID. We are just rolling out a national pilot across the whole of England of our machine learning driven IQ capacity planning tool. This is a true collaborative project with NHS Digital and Public Health England. But first, let us just step back and show you why this is such an important advance. COVID-19 has challenged healthcare providers around the world. I'm an intensive care consultant and the disease has placed a huge strain on ICUs, which are complex, costly and ultimately limited resources. Healthcare professionals have had to work hard to find ways to create the additional capacity needed and this has required not only meticulous planning but also comes at a huge cost in terms of staff and the provision of the other kinds of care that normally go on in a hospital. What's needed is a tool to help accurately plan capacity so that we can use the resources we do have available as efficiently as possible. All ICUs in England collect and submit a common data set to Public Health England, the CHESS data set. So if we can use this to monitor the throughput of patients, we should be able to predict and better plan for the demands of the coming weeks. I'm fortunate to collaborate with Michaela van der Schaar, who runs a world leading group on machine learning methods in medicine. So we set about trying to tackle this problem. Our group focuses on developing state-of-the-art machine learning methods for medicine. We do not just apply off-the-shelf methods. Instead, we are trying to understand and systematic formalize complex problems in medicine and healthcare and develop cutting edge methods to solve these complex problems. We have done that in numerous settings, in cystic fibrosis, in cancer, in Alzheimer's disease, in asthma, in cardiovascular disease, but also in hospitals. We have developed early warning systems in the hospital. We have developed methodologies for detecting which patients are unexpectedly deteriorating in the hospital and may need to be admitted to the ICU. In this current context, we are focusing on forecasting demand for resources in hospitals. This is essential to build the capacity planning tool that we have discussed before. For the current problem, we are forecasting the need for resources at the hospital as well as national level. We are formalizing this problem as a prediction problem where we are forecasting upon admission to the hospital, what is the need for resources for patients? For instance, upon admission to the hospital, we are predicting the probability that the patients are going to be discharged and how this probability is changing over time, the probability of patients dying and how this probability is changing over time, as well as the probability of them being admitted to the ICU. We are hence able to compute what is the expected time that the patient will spend in the regular world. Upon admission to the ICU, we are also computing the probability of the patients dying in the ICU or being discharged and how these probabilities are changing over time. We are hence able to determine the expected time that the patients are going to be spending in the ICU. We can do that also for other resources, such as ventilators. In this way, we are able to provide accurate forecasts for a hospital or at the national level. And this forecast can be used for capacity planning. So how are we achieving all this? We are doing this through a state-of-the-art machine learning method that we have developed called autoprognosis. Autoprognosis is building entire predictive pipelines, including missing data imputation, feature processing, classification, and calibration. We are not only issuing predictions, but also explanations and interpretations for these predictions. This technology has been validated in a variety of settings, cystic fibrosis, breast cancer, as well as 
deterioration in hospitals. Let us understand how this tool has been used to build the current machine learning driven ITU capacity planning tool. And for that, I would like to introduce two members of my team who made this incredible tool possible. They are Dr. Ahmed Allah and Zhao Zhichian. Now we are going to walk you through different components of the tool. Note that the figures shown below are for illustrative purpose only. The first component of the tool is an executive summary dashboard. It shows the demographics of patients admitted to hospital due to COVID-19. The user can choose to display the statistics on the national level or on the hospital level. By comparing these two views, it is possible to spot any deviation from the national average. The user can also define a patient cohort by hospital admission date. This enables the user to identify any temporal pattern or shift in distribution. Comorbidity is an important factor impacting survival, length of stay, and many other clinical outcomes of COVID-19 patients. Here we provide a drill down of comorbidity distribution by showing the histogram of number of comorbidity and the prevalence of specific comorbidities. Next, we show the trend of new hospital admission mortality and discharge, as well as daily ICU occupancy broken down by length of ICU stay. These figures provide information about current capacity and demand of ICU resources and hospital resources in general. The next section shows mortality rate and ICU admission rate line of sight. The line of sight is derived based on the patient demographics and comorbidity information. The user can compare the line of sight with the actual number to better understand the resource utilization. In addition, the line of sight also gives a hint about future demand in resources. So the last step of our tool is the simulation tab, which enables visualizing uh, capacity demand and capacity utilization for different settings for patient demand. And through this uh, tab, we can select uh, the surge capacity that we are anticipating, the number of newly hospitalized patients, and the rate by which new patients were expected to be arriving. And this can be set to either a constant rate or an exponential rate. And the exponential rate can also uh, have a different value for the exponent. So having selected the, sim the simulation configuration, uh, we can also select the average uh, individual features for the patients because the patient features can change from one geographical region to the other or from one NHS trust to the other. And among the features that we can select is the median age, the percentage of male patients, uh, the percentage of patients with comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, asthma, obesity, immunosuppressive disease, chronic respiratory disease, chronic heart disease, chronic renal disease, liver disease, or whether the patient is pregnant. And then by setting these numbers uh, and running the simulation, the tool will visualize the anticipated uh, ICU occupancy uh, by, in terms of the number of patients over time. And associated with this prediction is the 95% confidence intervals, uh, which visualizes the lower and upper limits on how much ICU beds we expect to be needed in the future. And in addition to the simulated ICU occupancy, we can also simulate the number of patients that are expected to die within uh, the, in, in a certain time horizon in the future. And this also includes upper and lower confidence estimate on these predictions. And not only the 
a number of patients who are expected to die that we can simulate, but we can also simulate the number of patients that we expect to be discharged leaving the hospital in the future time horizon, again with the associated confidence interval. This is the kind of machine learning application we need in medicine. Data-driven healthcare like this allows us to make real-time decisions based on the best possible information available to us, allowing us to find solutions to real problems in a timely way. This is not a medical device telling doctors how to treat patients. It is a capacity planning tool and a modeling tool. But of course, we would like to understand how good are the forecasts made by our machine learning tool. So we have worked closely over the past three weeks with Public Health England and more recently NHS Digital to understand how good these forecasts are. Of course, the forecasts are only as good as the data that we feed in them. However, as I understood from Ari and other clinical colleagues that we are working with, this is a tool they are waiting for and need to have their availability. Hence, it is my belief that as they are starting to use this tool, the data that they are going to feed into the system is going to improve. And hence, the predictions and forecasts made by the tool are going to improve as well. So I look forward over the weeks ahead to work with NHS Digital and Public Health England, as well as clinical colleagues all over the nation to build a robust tool that is going to help them in this complex and complicated time of COVID. Stay well.